Hey everybody, this is Benny, and it's, uh, well I should say evening, huh? let's talk some history, kind of the history of New Orleans International Airport, which I still call it New Orleans International Airport. If you ever flown in and out of there, you've seen the baggage tags that say MSY on it. You ever wonder what that stood for? Moisant Stockyards. And I'm going to tell you why. Back about 1910, a guy from Illinois named John Moisant, that's the M in the MSY, decided he wanted to fly. So he built himself a couple of planes, a biplane, crashed, a monoplane, wouldn't was even unstable on the ground, so he didn't fly it. So uh, he went to the Louis Blériot School of Flying in France and got his pilot's license. And if I remember right, the way the school worked, if you bought one of his airplanes, hey, your tuition was free. Such a deal. So he did that. <coughs> he bought a Blériot 11, a monoplane design. And it flew very nicely. Had a three cylinder Anzani engine, which was designed by Alessandro Anzani, who was a motorcycle racer. He decided he wanted to build some airplane motors. And it was a reliable little three cylinder, kind of a semi radial engine that uh, was used in a Blario 11. Anyway, John Moisant got his license got his airplane, and became the first man to fly a passenger across the English Channel. Actually, two passengers, his mechanic and his constant companion, Mademoiselle Fifi, his cat. Yeah, his cat flew with him, and uh, she went everywhere with him on that plane. So she became the first cat to fly across the English Channel. <coughs> so anyway... Uh, John entered a few races. He had only been flying since the spring of 1910. Made his way to New Orleans. Uh, became the first man to fly a passenger in Mississippi. <laughs> and ended up in New Orleans on December 30th, 1910. <coughs> Decided to do an exhibition race against a Packard. He lost. Packard was faster, and uh, that was in City Park. So the next day, December 31st, 1910, he uh, decided to fly to Kenner, where the airport is located now, because there was a Michelin Cup with a $4,000 prize to be held uh, the next day, I believe. So, December 31st, 1910, John Moisant takes off alone, he left Fifi behind, to, uh, he was just going to survey the field, flying around, get a feel, feel for the course, and about 100 feet off the ground, a gust of wind caught his plane and threw him out. He didn't wear a seat, he didn't wear the seat belt. Threw him out, and he died in that pasture in Kenner, Louisiana, December 31st, 1910. So it became Moisant Field, and it became a stockyard after that. Moisant Stockyard, MSY. There's your baggage tag, MSY. And it later became Moisant Airfield when the uh, Army decided to use it as a training base. After the war, it opened up as a commercial airport. It was uh, Moisant Field, I think. And it was known as Moisant for years and years until they built a new terminal in 1959. If you ever, if you ever seen it, ever seen some old pictures of the airport, uh, there's this 
kind of a kind of a archway, an extended archway. That was the main terminal, <clears throat> and it still stands since 1959. You just really can't see it anymore. And uh, that was New Orleans International Airport. So now you know why MSY is on your baggage tag, Moisant Stockyards, and why it's named Moisant. You want to know why I told you this? Because I got something in the mail today. Let me show you. I'm going to twist you around. This tiny little box of a Blario 11, a frog kit. I got it unopened. Well, you know, I had to open it up. Made in Great Britain. 172 scale. I wish it was a little bigger. But uh, I'd have to get a 48 scale for that. Of the Blario 11, as flown by John Moisant. It came sealed in the plastic. Has some cool pictures on it, and there's a picture on the bottom of the colors. It comes with two figures, a standing guy, I guess, to start it up, and a pilot. And uh, we're gonna take a look inside this box. If I can open it up with one hand. It even had a piece of tape on it. A piece of tape was still holding it together. <laughs> nice little description right here, if it'll focus. A four and a half inch wingspan. It's got two French flags with it. And uh, I'll show you those. It has a date on it. This box even smells old. I just want to keep it closed now to keep the smell in. Smells like an old box. There's no date on it, so I really don't know from, uh, I really don't know when the kit was made. But here's a field, which a plane will sit on, maybe, if I build it like that. Flag stand. We'll take a look at the instructions in a minute. But uh, it's not very many pieces, only 39 of them. There's one of the pilots. Pretty nice detail on him. I like the way his uh, flight suit's folded. He has some nice folds on it. Also has some flash, but that's all right. This is a pretty nicely detailed part. I don't think I've ever, I've ever painted figures. There you go. Nice picture of a Frenchman. And as one of the flags, it actually has glue on the back of it. I guess you can lick it and stick it. And it's got a Blario 9 Calais to Dover, 1909, because Louis Blario, who operated the flight school, was the first man to fly across the English Channel. So that's why. Flew from Calais to Dover, 1909, and opened up his flight school. Wings are, well, I guess they were never on a sprue, but there's some nice little canvas like details on it. If it'll show you. Come on, you can do it. I knew you could do it. Not bad. That's all injector pin, injector pin mark, but I can, I can fix that. And it's got one sprue. <laughs> one little old sprue. They're all jammed together like that. But uh, it's a nice little kit. Even though it's old, I'm still going to put it together. Nice little wheel details. As the uh, fuselage. I'm going to have to find a wood color. Cause all that's all that's a wood frame. Yeah, it's not bad overall. I don't like putting this together. Not really my era of airplanes. I've I don't think I've ever built anything before that was made before World War II. This would be a first. 
has the uh, engine cradle and front suspension, a rudder, a bunch of little spars. Now I'm going to have to get some really thin wire to uh, string it up. It came with a couple of interesting sheets. I wonder if they're still in business. Rovex Industries Service Department, if you got pieces missing, write to them in block letters and return it to Rover Industries. Now you was just focused. What the hell's wrong with you? There you go. Kind of cool, huh? Please use block letters. And there's a list of all the kits they had. The black series, of which this one is a black series. They did make a lot of kits. A lot of, a lot of nice stuff, too. Now, red series. Hmm. Uh, green series. Some ships. Mostly the British ships. Some bigger kits. I have to look in the history of these guys. In an orange series. Some American planes in there, along with uh, British planes. I don't see any. Yeah, there's some German planes in it. Hmm. Now, let's take a look at these instructions. Nice little box, huh? What else was on here? Oh, yeah. On the side of the box, once you open it up, and some silhouettes of kits they've got. Hmm. One more. The Gloucester Riddle. I think that was England, the uh, RAF's first jet, wasn't it? Oh, you jerk. Yeah, well. These instructions are pretty cool, too. And they... Ah, they smell like the box. I love that smell. You put these up in the box before they get lost. It's written in a bunch of different languages. Some I know, some I don't. I recognize the Italian and the German and the French. Others. Instructions are really simple. Well, it's a simple plane. Not a lot of parts. This has only got 39 parts in it. That's your step one. <laughs> it doesn't tell you what any of the parts are, though. There's no description of them. Just a, just a part number. Yeah. <sighs> Mostly it's painting that's going to bring it to life. Hmm. It has a display. Got his French flag and its field. And the guy standing next to it. There's a whole lot of, uh, in each language, some top modeling tips. I was going to put it on here for a second. You can pause it if you like. And each, each step, mostly each step, has an illustration of what they're talking about. That goes along with the step. They've got, what, 15 steps, but there's only 13 pictures. So a couple of them they decided wasn't important enough. That you should know, you should know what, uh, what they mean. It actually says to use emery paper to uh, rub it down after you got it together <laughs> and to use metal polish to uh, take out scratches if there's scratches in it I know that can A little tip to uh, uh, painting camouflage they none of these 
illustrations go with this model. They've, they've got, uh, well, I know that model, that's a Newport. <clears throat> that is a Newport. World War One fighter of the French Air Force. It's telling you to use your use your box to uh, assemble your model. <laughs> they call it a frog working tray, so you don't lose any of the small pieces. So there's a history lesson and a really old kit that I got off eBay. I got another one coming. I don't know why I got two of them. One of them I bid on it. And I was the only one. So after three days, I got another Blario 11 coming. I don't know what I'm going to do with that one. I might um, see if I could make it look like his sister's plane. His sister, Matilda, took up flying. She was the second woman in the country to get her pilot's license. And she flew until April 14th, 1912. We all know that date. She crashed her plane in Wichita Falls. And after she crashed, she said, oh, hell with this. So she quit flying. She never flew again. Or she never, she never piloted again. She died in 1964 in California. And her friend, Harriet Quimby, was the first woman in, in uh, the first American woman to get her pilot's license. And Harriet and Matilda were good friends. And on July, July 1st, Harriet and William Willard were flying. She was she had taken them up in uh, New York. She was going to she was up there for an exhibition, and her and William Willard fell out of the plane at about fifteen hundred feet. The plane glided itself down. So Harry Quimby died by falling out of a Blario. Matilda crashed her Blario and quit flying. And John Moisant, who the New Orleans International Airport was named for, in Kenner, Louisiana, fell out of his plane at about 100 feet, landed on his head. End of the year 1910. How old was he? Uh, I don't remember, 30-something. And uh, has a little history lesson and a review, such as it was, of the Blario 11. And if I turn this thing off without shaking you up too much. We'll see you.